Every which way you went, they was a sniper trying to get you. They shot Maddox right beside me in an old shed way over the field. And Maddox was walking down there. He, he had a BAR burning automatic rifle. And uh, they shot him down right beside of me. He fell down the cloud field. Like that. Anybody that ain't never went through with his children don't know what he did. But me, to me, I'll make a dream out of it. To me, I'll make it a dream, and it's though it never happened. I have to keep on living, going on. If you hold and ponder things like that, well, you wind up with worries and heartaches that you don't need seeing you friend that you care for and think a lot of drop beside that and stuff like that. I met Mr. Dean and I think he's a wonderful Christian man. He's a pastor and I've had a chance to talk to him a couple of times and he, he has just really touched my heart. And he's 91 years old, he's a veteran, he's done his duty for our country and I think we ought to be willing to stand up and pay back the, the freedom for the freedoms that we have to take care of our veterans. We, we've run across a 90 year old World War II veteran and when we can't fix a house, it can't be fixed. The, the structure and foundation of the house just wasn't, there wasn't a place to start and rebuild in anything. Or, uh, we have 35 teams coming in this summer, and, and some of those teams are skilled. If there's anything to even start with, uh, they can put up new walls, they can go under a lot of times and redo some of the foundation or some of the, the flooring, and, and we, we've just seen some miracles. But in this one case, just everything you needed to attach to was already gone. But we came up with this idea, and, and it was a, it's a home build, but it's kind of the size of a, what's called a Katrina house, and, and which means it's just a smaller, more compact house. But we have a, this, this veteran, uh, George Dean, living here with his son, and uh, the idea is that we're going to give him a dry, safe, comfortable place to live. Uh, he's, he's 90 years old. He served our country, and, and we're just doing the best we can to serve him. I've been here uh, 22 years I'm trying to serve. Okay. W when did, are you retired? I've been retired for, for I guess, about 18 years. Yeah. Where'd you retire from? I've been retired from the Mobile Mechanic. I've oh. 63 years. And the old house, it uh, was made out of that uh, sawdust boat. Yeah, particle, I, particle board? I, yeah, and I didn't know it when I bought it. The house just went to nothing and it started leaking all over and falling down and it's impossible to live in. And you couldn't live in it but, uh, in no way. Well, I had to go to my sister-in-law and uh, pay her to stay down there with her. She's fine lady that was my brother's. Wife, he passed away about four years ago. Yeah, the uh, back side of it started falling down first. It fell in way down next to the ground, and we couldn't get to the bathroom. Yeah. And if the bathroom was in it, it was fixed. It was beautiful fix and everything in it, but she just went and collapsed. And then the kitchen, it started collapsing, and the ceiling started falling in, and filled that floor full of old dirt, trash, and everything. And it was more than it had been cleaned up. Yeah. And so uh, I talked to some fair person at the Shepherd Center, and they uh, talked like that there was a possibility that they might be able to help me, you yeah. know. And, uh, they have been so wonderful. They have done such a great job. Okay. This group is called Southside. Uh, Baptist Church. They're from down in Florence, South Carolina. This is the third year that they've been able to come. 
Uh, they come with some of the most experienced uh, workers. Uh, they've got electricians, they've got certified plumbers, they've got building contractors that's heading up the group. It's almost like having a building team come in. Uh, a lot of times if you have a disaster over in hurricane areas, uh, you, you see building contractors from all over the United States take their teams in. Well, we sort of have that same approach right here in the Appalachia areas as some of these churches come in and they've got all of these folks in their church. So there's uh, behind us, there's something like 20 folks working. And in this particular case, we've been blessed with this particular team uh, being able to come and they've been able to bring these cabinets and refrigerator stove, you know, and they said all of this stuff just has fallen in their lap within yeah. the last couple of weeks. It's almost like work, ain't it? Yeah. I'll sweat it more this week than I'll sweat in a long time. He's on, he's coming way. back. He's coming back. All right. Easy. All right. Well, I guess that's easy. Okay. Good deal. Good job. Got the rubber in there and everything. Our church decided to do another mission project up here in Tennessee uh, with One Accord Ministry. I didn't get to come this time for the pilot trip, but I did um, when they came back and they said that, that they found a, a, a veteran that needed a home. It was an automatic. You could tell that God was in it and it just automatically that, that was that was where we needed to be. He's a character. That, that's, that's about the biggest word I could find. Uh, he is, um, it, it's so cool to be able to find someone that actually you can correspond with with um, with history that was there when history was made. I mean, we make history in, in our in our different countries that we help with now, but when to be able to be in a, a military action with with a uh, with Patton is is just unbelievable to me. But there's a memory in that that will never be forgot. I don't care how long you live, you'll never forget that memory. Like my. On this scene, I'm at 3472 I'll know that the day I'm leaving this place. And I've enjoyed my life as working as an automobile mechanic 63 long years. And I tried to help everybody in the world. And then all of a sudden, being an old World War II war vet, there comes these blessed church people and they put me in a home. <laughs> Something's worthwhile. <laughs> I got something out of this life, friend. Yes, sir. And I, I, I can't tell how much I appreciate that. You told me about the day that you, are, you, you saw George Patton. Oh, yeah. At about 2 o'clock in the morning, he jumped in the Lion River, so let's go, boys. <laughs> I don't want to try that no more. <laughs> <laughs> I have to come out a mile down the river. That's swim, the swiftest river I've ever seen in my life. Must now, he was standing right close to you, wasn't he? I mean, right he, he led his troops into Germany. Right beside him. He said, let's go, boy, and jump right back there. I'm telling you, that man didn't care for nothing. He was gone. How deep was it? Huh? How deep was that? I don't know. I didn't really find no bother. <laughs> <laughs> Backpack, bandoliers, rifle, and uh, uh, hand grenades, and everything. Mm -hmm. And boots, combat boots, clothes, and everything. Let's go. Just chew them right in the middle. Here we go. Did you have a rope or something to hold for you? Oh, no, it wasn't nothing to hold you. Let's go, boys. Huh. That man was go get. I had a bazooka that day. And a man was loading for me, was back here behind me with him. Bazooka shells, where you left the war around it, you know. And I, I was up there, and uh, that tank got on the hill up there, and he was shooting in the town. And uh, he shot uh, that side of the building off. He just cleaned the side of the building. That's it, go get it, wall. And uh, I told him, I said, load that bazooka. I'm going to stop that tank. I got to stop here. And uh, I turned around, and he was riding the staircase going down while it was a falling. But he left the shell. I crawled over on my stomach and got me one left around that bazooka pen, rolled over on my belly, laid that thing up, touched off my shoulder like that, 
knocked the tank, uh, track off in that thing. I got that bronze star for knocking the track off. <laughs> I knocked the track off it. Well, so, when the gun was out of order, it dropped it down, see, and it uh, couldn't, couldn't come far on the building. Now, I was up two stories up. I had to fall down to jump down <laughs> to about 12, 15, maybe 20 feet, I don't know. But I come out of there, goddamn. And uh, that's how I got that medal. Sergeant Farrington and Sergeant Ballinger, they each had a tune, uh, platoon of so many men. And uh, they, they, we was in there, and directly they somebody come through there in an old truck like thing and throw the tailor masher in that hallway. And everybody run to the back side of the house and it blowed up and blowed all the doors and the building out. But we didn't lose no men in it. We never lost no men. But they, they got way and quick. When that tater masher hit the floor and started scooting across there, everybody, everybody screwed like chickens. <laughs> and I started up the hill with Ballinger. He was down behind us, him and the rest of the boys down there. And, Farrington was way down below that somewhere down there, and him and his boys. And uh, there's an old brick house right there, and, and a row of pine trees. Looks like pine. And uh, I got about up, I guess I got and hit that cedar to them pine trees. And I looked, and there's a machine gun in the upper window upstairs, is shooting right down on me. And it kept shooting and shooting the dirt around me, just began to jump up everywhere. And his voice said to me, he said, play dead. I stopped the gun, fellas, so like a quit. Tank pulled up on top of me, I was straddling. One of our mm -hmm. boys. He started shooting that building. <laughs> he shot that building to the ground. And uh, I'd laid there for three and a half hours, and the only thing that would move was that. I could do that, and everything else wouldn't move. My arm wouldn't move, my leg wouldn't move, nothing wouldn't move. And Ballinger said, uh, the medic said, Dean's dead, said, uh, you better try to get him out of there. I said, don't you come up here, I ain't dead, but I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> were you still, were there still people shooting at you when that was going on? No, that tank shot that building down. And they both killed us in the, them other boys killed in the troopers in, the, in them trees. They killed them, they got to them out. Them old SS stone troopers, you had to kill them, they wouldn't kill them. Well, they, why couldn't you move? Huh? Why? I had laid so long that I had went to sleep all over. See, I was like, I had to be because he was watching me. And so I laid there so long that my whole body went to sleep. And I. The only way I could wake up was move my neck. And I could move my neck. If it got up the top of my head, I would have never got up. You know what I mean? I would have never got up. But anyhow, it didn't get that. That tank come in and saved that. And uh, I got to moving around. I got to moving my neck back and forth like that. And it moved. And directly my arms got where they would move. And then my body got where I could move. My legs got where I could move. And uh, I rolled off down the bank into the fox <laughs> where Bowser was at. <laughs> and, uh, well, I didn't get the Purple Heart. I, no. I owned it, but I didn't get I, got, I lost two battle stars. They didn't give them to me. I don't know why, but I went in uh, there at uh, Secret Line down the hall, and I went down through there. And I uh, went through where the bells and bowls was going on, part of that, going on. We was going on in. And uh, about Czechoslovakia, down through, between Hall and Czechoslovakia, them dragon teeth, we went down that line, walked through there, went on in there, and followed the way through to get down on in to the biggest part of Germany. Walked across every nation over, I reckon. I, I walked through snow up to my knees, I walked through snow up to my neck. And the bulge is up to your neck. And uh, you put on a white uniform. And you wore that white uniform through the snow to keep planes from strafing. Were you surprised that a man who's had those life experiences was in such need? No. no. Not, not, in, not in the world we live in right now. Yeah. It's not. Um, but the opportunity to help. Um, 
is, is great. Yeah. Uh, wish we could do more. Um, they all deserve more. And I said I'm going to leave this chill before they get in trouble. That's right. That's right. Bad influence on you. Thank you, man. I try to be good, you know, but that's so hard to do. Hey, look here. <laughs> hey, you better get there on time and then eat. That's well, all I can do. You better get up for you in three nights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these children are marvelous. They have God's got some people that people should help and talk to. You know what I mean? I want to say this, I know this will be going somewhere. Yeah. I want to say for the people that know the Lord, those that don't know Him, can give 10% of what they make to these good churches and people like this that work their hearts out and go home and thank the Lord for the pleasure that He's let them enjoy of building this beautiful place. Someone else is in trouble somewhere. Hey, someone else needs help. And, and people would just go and, and support these children and get this keep going. This is something other that's worth more than diamonds, silver or gold. It's a more precious than that. Somewhere. Now, I, I, I'm at something that I can relax for the rest of my days. I don't know how many I got. The one morning the sun will raise on your knees and she'll go down the well for the last time in this whole life. Now, here on this earth, but I've got a whole load of it. Woo! I'd love to stay here and help some poor old soul. Yeah. I'd like to be able to do something for someone. Yeah. If it's nothing but a pie. Yeah. If it's nothing but just a few words of encouragement. I'd like to pass it on. They've taken me in, and there's a little old shed way out on the farm like place. And they walked in there down that farm, and Ballinger said, Is that all I get? No, he said, I'm going to let you have Dean and uh, William G. Smith and uh, another boy, Ed Dramatics. And, uh, well, he said, uh, Dean's a bazooka man. He said, that's what you need more than anything. And uh, he, the bouncer said the bazooka sitting over at the corner and said they killed the one that's carrying it yesterday. I want you to know that. 
I looked at him like this. I said, well, I don't mean nothing. <laughs> oh, I told him, I said, I don't mean nothing. He said, that's a fighting spirit. I like that. <laughs> he was a good one.